The argument can be made that nickel is the most important part of the modern day EV battery. As you've probably heard by now on the Q2 conference call, Elon was pleading with nickel miners to produce more quickly in a sustainable fashion. If so, Tesla will immediately give them a huge long-term contract. By the end of this episode, you'll have a much better understanding of the nickel industry, as well as some potential investment angles. But before we get into it, we wanna take 30 seconds to mention a little something. So as you guys can see, our merch shelf is now live. I'm working on a few more designs. So if you guys would like to see anything, please let me know. And so when I started this channel, I wanted it to be a broad name. So if you do decide to buy some merchandise, you don't have to say, oh yeah, it's this YouTube channel that I follow. You can say whatever you want. You can say you're a fan of Tesla, which is why we have the Tesla T. You can talk about batteries, solar storage, because we want these to serve as a conversation starter, not that you rep some YouTube guy. So keep that in mind. Well, that's it you guys. So prepare to get hit with the big facts only. <laughs> what a lot of people are missing with what Elon said on the conference call is what he said when he said, don't wait to the nickel miners. Right now with the price of nickel around $6 a pound, most projects can't actually proceed unless the price of nickel is above about $7.50 per pound. So the big takeaway here is that there are price thresholds for the production of nickel. A lot of these big mining companies don't wanna produce more until the price hits a certain point. The other major point that Elon stressed is that these companies should mine in a sustainable way. Most of the nickel supply growth has come from nickel pig iron in Indonesia. The challenge with nickel in Indonesia is processing laterite ore. Don't worry, I'll explain this shortly. This requires huge amounts of electricity, which is currently coming from coal firepower. Then you need even more coal to change the mineral into a metal. To make one ton of nickel, you use 25 to 30 tons of coal. Multiply this by 2.8, and that gives you 75 to 90 tons of CO2 per ton of nickel produced. You multiply by 2.8 because complete combustion of one short ton or 2,000 pounds generates around 5,720 pounds or 2.8 short tons of carbon dioxide. Thus, a lot of these projects right now have a less than ideal carbon footprint. So let's take a look at where the largest nickel reserves are. Australia has the largest supply with 19.5 million metric tons. They're followed by Brazil with 10.5 million, Russia with 7.5, New Caledonia, which is in France with 6.5, Cuba at 5.5, and the Philippines with roughly 5 million metric tons. In 2017, the Philippine government cracked down on mine operators violating environmental laws and closed 28 of the 41 mining companies. As of 2018, the Philippines were the second largest producer of nickel ore right after Indonesia, and both countries have heavily supplied China, the world's largest purchaser of nickel. Industry experts believe Indonesia will be the leading supplier of nickel for the next decade. Now let's take a look at the largest mines and the largest companies operating them. Vale SA is one of the biggest players in the industry operating mines in Canada, Indonesia, New Caledonia, and Brazil. Norilsk Nickel has operations in Russia and South Africa, Glencore, which you've heard of because of their deal with Tesla and Cobalt, has mines in Canada, Australia, and New Caledonia. BHP Billiton operates in Brazil. These are all names to keep in mind in the coming years. A quick investment tip for the nickel market. Be careful with the narrative and make sure that you buy quality companies that are when and not if questions. Location plays a huge factor in operating costs for nickel mining companies as those located closer to ports and infrastructure have lower costs and thus higher margins. There are plenty of companies looking to break into nickel mining, but we're talking five to 10 years to get a mine up and running. Companies have to deal with permits, construction, commissioning, and ramping. Now we'll take a look at why nickel is so crucial for the EV boom. Nickel, of course, has a very high energy density. As you can see on this chart, the cathode material in NCA811 battery cells is 54% of the battery cells overall cost. Of that 54%, nickel makes up over 45% of that cost. 
Thus, about 25% of the battery cell costs come directly from nickel. However, only about 4% of nickel is used in electric vehicles, and the primary use of nickel is in stainless steel. To be specific, stainless steel makes up about 65% of nickel use, followed by metal alloys at 20%, plating at 10%, and EV batteries making up the remaining 5%. Of course, we know that EV demand is set to grow exponentially in the coming years, but even if that presumption does not play out, the nickel industry will continue to grow. However, Glencore, one of the biggest players in the space, forecasted that the EV market could reach 25-30% to 30 of the nickel market over the next 10 years. Historically, nickel use has increased around 5% annually over the past 10 years, so a case can be made to remain bullish on nickel even if the EV revolution is delayed. In 2015 and 16, the price of nickel was low enough that nickel miners slowed operations as they did not want to sell the precious resource when the spot prices were depressed. Once the demand to supply ratio was more favorable, the prices began to climb. As you can see, in June of this year, the trending price for nickel has started to increase once again. To better understand this, we're going to look at the different types of nickel and the different classes. So, as a metal, nickel is finite and mining is intrinsically unsustainable, but there are abundant nickel resources known around the world. You have nickel sulfides or nickel laterites. Sulfides are typically found deep underground and are more expensive and difficult to mine, while laterite deposits are found near the surface. Historically, production has been dominated by sulfide ores, but with each passing year, production is shifting to laterite ores. Sulfide ores are easier to process through conventional mining, smelting, and refining compared to laterite ores which require intensive processing. Laterite ores require more energy and chemicals to produce than sulfide nickel. Most nickel uses are dissipative which limit high rates of recycling, resulting in the progressive shift to laterite projects becoming inevitable. The majority of nickel resources are contained in laterite ores, as people have chosen to produce from sulfide ores to avoid the difficulty of processing these laterite ores. The growing production of nickel from laterite will lead to a greater environmental footprint over time, adding to the sustainability challenge. Sulfides are typically higher grades than laterites, and to round this out, Class 1 nickel products have a purity minimum of 99.8% and roughly 55% of nickel mining output relates to Class 1 products. Class 2 is of course less pure and less than 99.8%. These Class 2 products make up the remaining 45% of the nickel mining output. When it comes to investing today, don't get too caught up in Class 1 versus Class 2. Speaking of investing, we're almost there. Historically, nickel has seen very volatile prices. As you can see, nickel hit $54,000 per ton in 2007 due to the rapid expansion of Chinese demand. However, as prices rose, China began seeking more affordable options, turning to 200 series stainless steel, which is 1-2% nickel, rather than 300 series, which is 8% nickel. So this same phenomenon can actually happen today if over the next two to three years nickel prices rise and it becomes too expensive, it can easily be priced out of the market and more EV suppliers would shift to the LFP battery supply chain or the lithium iron phosphate. So there are four names to keep an eye on, but three of which you as an American can directly invest in. We have Polymet or PLM getting a lot of attention recently, which is a penny stock still in the development stage located in Minnesota at their North Met project. There are BHP and Volley, which are much more established companies, neither of which are pure nickel plays, but can give you exposure to the nickel market in a diversified fashion. The fourth is Canada Nickel and their wholly owned subsidiary Net Zero Metals trading under CNC on TSXV or the Toronto Stock Venture Exchange. I don't want to make this episode too long, so for more coverage on these four companies, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss any episodes. I will also be releasing coverage on these companies over on Patreon, as we're only about a week or two away from being ready to produce regular Patreon content. So if you guys want to help support the research and the late nights that we put in to make these episodes for you guys, consider heading over to Patreon where you can support us for as little as $3 a month. 
And as always, please like the video and check out the merch. More stuff should be coming out, I wanna say in two days. So I'll see you guys next video. Bye guys.